Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. I've carried on uh, today, recently with uh, trying to get this satellite up and built, so I've done a little bit of rearranging here to make sure I've got enough room to bring all the uh, all the components of it in. Um, and now as you can see we've got the fuel, we've got the batteries, we've got the control units and we've got the low density structures. So we've, we've talked about all of those already, um, the batteries are being made over here, so not very far away in fact. The control units are being made where is it? Up here somewhere, I think. Yes, way up, way up here. Low density structures are still are still using the same supply of them as I had before from ages ago. That's that's being made down here. And wasn't there something else in there? Oh yeah, and the rocket fuel, of course, is being made in, in this sort of column running down here. So, but I've I've carried on a little bit further than that. So I've built up this this stuff down here, which is working towards making the radio thermoelectric. Um, Thermo radio electric those those syllables in some sort of order of, or another um, generators that are, again for the satellite and I'm, I've got part way there um, as you can see from here it takes the sodium cobaltate which is uh, being made here from the um, and then the aluminium and lead the plutonium however is still um, pending shall we say so we uh, haven't quite managed to get that one up and running yet although I have made some progress towards it which I'll show you in a moment these um this so the, the this this was relatively easy the so, sodium oxide because that comes out of it's one of the steps required in making making sodium in making cobalt as normal um, so I've just copied these across here and then I've got them feeding out and as usual round a long and winding belt to another of these stations down here um, finally there's the uh, the plutonium that we require for these um, for these radio thermoelectric generators so up here. It turns out there's there's various ways to make um, make plutonium, um, but only one of them seems to be particularly practical. So this is this is an, an enrichment process which I'm working towards. Um, Neptune, I don't even know where that. Oh, so these are all coming from used up fuel cells, which is difficult. Um, I can't get uh, americium without having something a used up fuel cell to turn it to turn into that. But I can make thorium ore, and I can do that. Yeah, there's various ways. To do it. There's two ways to do it. Um, one is making these, which just look like an enormous headache. But the easier way is taking mineral sludge, which I can make from thermal water, and pumping it through these coal filters. And that makes mineral sludge, which then turns into this, um, into uranium or fluorite ore and thorium ore. Now, I only really to start with, I only really want the thorium. But as you can see, that's a 0.5 percent chance of one in a uh, 200 times that these these things run, it'll spit out one of those. And that's why. We've managed to make a whole total of 308 thorium and 16 plutonium out of this, which is a bit rubbish. Um, but again, so it's not only is there a a one in uh, where is it? There we go. A one in 200 chance of making a thorium. Once you've made thorium, you need five of them, and then there's still only a 15% chance of getting a plutonium out of it. So we've got 16 so far, which is not great. I've put. Um, productivity modules in the centrifuge though so in theory I get slightly more out than I would otherwise I'm not sure how much what the, whether it tweaks the chances of getting the plutonium or not but uh, still we've got up to 16 now the thing is I've got a slightly difficult decision to make with that because in order to launch the no, it's not with that. in order to launch the rocket I need one plutonium to make each radio thermoelectric generator but then I and I only need ten thermoelectric generators to make the satellite, so I only actually need ten plutonium. But if I take ten of these out now, yes, yeah, sure, I can get the rocket up, and that was sort of what I was aiming towards. Um, but I but if I can get more, if I can get up to forty of them, then I can start using the enrichment process, which comes from which is the, 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 the this one. Um, and, just, and start using up massive quantities of this uranium-238 that's being generated. I've got 1.1 thousand of that, so I can start making plutonium at um, a more effective rate. I mean, this is basically the same as the Covarex enrichment process from vanilla. It's the same. It's the same numbers, and if it had the similar sort of effect. So I could start doing that, and that would then allow me to uh, very quickly make quite a lot more of it. Um, and then get, th and get things actually running sensibly. Otherwise, I've just got to get, use enormous quantities of thermal water through this through this filtering process to make it. And I, well, put it this way: I've ripped through all of these. These tanks were all full when I started, and they're now well, they're not empty, but they're certainly not very. <laughs> there's not very much left in them, and these pumps have been running the whole time. So, it's an expensive process in in the um, in, in thermal water. It uses up a lot of it. 
and that's why most of these machines have now gone to sleep as well. So eventually I hope to get that up to 40 and then I can start running this enrichment process and getting a bit more of that through. Um, and then once that's done I can then bring 10 of them down here, probably by hand, because by the time it's got up to 10,000 in order to get a train's worth down, I'll, I'll, I'll have grown old and died waiting for it. But I can I can then plumb it in to do that for, for, for later ones. So that, so that should be okay. Uh, we can build those up. They'll go down this belt here, up to here to go to the satellite. What's the other thing for the satellite? There's something else needed for the satellite. Oh yes, the radars, uh, the radar fives. I need to have in another station to pull those in. So I'm going to need to make another one of these station blocks because I didn't make this one big enough, basically. My original plan was to do all of these sort of manufacture jobs off-site, but then I ended up pulling in the lead and the aluminium and the cobalt oxide, um, so I didn't have enough room for that. But that's not that's not a problem. There's plenty of space down here. I'll just whack him in about about here, maybe going round these um, bot pots down here. So yeah, as you can see, I'm very nearly there. The um, the rocket the rocket launch is going to be. I mean, I, I could launch it now. I could finish the satellite and launch it now. In fact, I need to put in a, that there. There we go. Um, to look to load the satellite in when it's finally ready. Um, and then after that, they'll get much, much easier. I'm going to need... To, oh, I'm going to need another station to take the uh, white science, the space science, away when it um, comes out as well. But, you know, I can... There's, um, there's, there's plenty of time for that. So I think that that's been reasonably um, productive. It's, it's, it's not been an... In, I don't feel like I've done an enormous amount, but there was quite a lot of sort of head-scratching and, and reading through the lists of possible ways to do things to decide what the best way to try and generate some plutonium is. Uh, once I've got that coming in at a slightly better rate, I can then start thinking about using it for nuclear power, maybe nuclear weapons. I've got a little bit of the uh, the other type of uranium, uh, 235... Yeah, it must be 235. Um, I've 10 of those, so I could, I could potentially use those to make... Um, something useful in nuclear, maybe explosives, maybe, um, well, maybe maybe power. Well, we'll see how that goes. See what I feel like. Um, so that's a that's a to come. But for, but for now, I mean, power isn't an issue. I've I've slapped down enough. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. I've slapped down enough uh, solar panels that there's plenty of power. There's plenty of power available. If I go for a longer term view, you can see <laughs> you can see these wild spikes we're getting here, where the um, where I've done a lot of stuff with the robo with, with the uh, construction robots. In fact, it looks like let's zoom in. Yeah, the um, <laughs> it looks like I did get a little bit of coal coal generated power in there as well. Um, Although not not very much, it's basically been running entirely off, almost entirely off the um, off the solar panels. Uh, I just thought of something else. Oh yes, yeah, I've um, finished pacifying this area, so I've gone in here, cle cleaned out those last two biters that were there, put put um, radars along the bottom properly, and, and generally tidied everything up. So I've ripped out the wall that was across here. That was actually what caused that massive spike in the um, in the uh, in the robot ports and the power usage, uh, because the the what the the wall going along here was like like all of my other walls. It had um, it had a belt going along like this, full of ammunition and coal. It had turrets. It had walls. So there was a lot of stuff for the bots to pick up. So it took quite a long time and quite a lot of bots to tidy it all up. But it's now done. It's now gone. That means I can just carry on expanding down this way with more as I, as and when I need more metal. So that's that's good. Um, not that I'm, I'm not so sure whether how much more I'll need of that. There might be I might end up moving a few of these things like the leading up lead production over here. I don't know, but. We shall see. I think at the moment I'm still pushing towards getting that rocket launched, um, and then I'm going to try and decide, and then decide what to do after that. Um, the what's going on here? Oh, it's bringing in coal. That's bringing in coal for these filters. Yes. So the, these these stations are all waiting to be used for anything else I needed for nuclear. I might need I don't know. I might need iron in for uh, for making the. Um, uh, nuclear fuel cells, for example, or I might make I might make nuclear fuel for trains as well. Perhaps that's always fun. But for now, I'm basically waiting for this to kept to uh, continue to pr continue running and to hopefully produce um, another 24 uh, pieces of plutonium, so I can start enriching it. But as you can see, this is almost entirely. Oh, there's there's a piece of um, that that little sort of mustard yellow one. There is that is the other piece of is the piece of um, thorium. Thorium or whichever one it is that I'm waiting for. Um, there it goes. It's nothing oddly. It's, it's shown as a red icon there, but the ones in in world uh, look more like mustard seeds or something. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with the fluoride, fluorite, fluori, fluori, yeah, whatever that, whatever that stuff is. What is that stuff? 
fluorite ore. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but maybe I'll find some some use, some actual use for it. Um, but until then, it can just accumulate in this in this warehouse. Um, the uranium I know is useful, so I'm just trying to turn that into actually useful stuff. Okay, so as I say, I think that's basically it for this episode. Um, there hasn't been a huge amount for me to talk about, but I thought it it feels like I'm making pro making some progress with the more com with quite complicated things. So it's, it's worth it's worth mentioning and having a sort of a quick filler episode now, and then hopefully the next one will um, will be having a rocket launch. I hope you'll come along and join me for that for the sort of the the grand finale of at least the first first big push. And uh, yes, I'll see you there for that one. Thanks for watching.